Namaskar. A warm welcome to World News and Indian Perspective on All India Radio. This is Manoj Singh Rana and with me is Anita Anand bringing glimpses of the major developments of the day from across the globe. Over the next half an hour we shall bring you the latest from the world of politics, economy, sports, entertainment and more. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs meeting to review steps taken to boost oxygen availability in the country. Over 14 crore vaccine doses administered in India, 3 lakh 46 thousand new COVID-19 cases reported in the last 24 hours. ASEAN leaders meet in Indonesia in a bid to resolve the Myanmar crisis, call on end to violence against citizens. Indonesian Navy declares missing submarine with 53 persons on board as sunk. India prepares for third phase of vaccination commencing from 1st May. US joins India Sweden Climate Initiative lead IT. And in IPL cricket Rajasthan Royals take on Kolkata Knight Riders in Mumbai. As the number of covid cases is on the rise again we appeal to our listeners not to lower the guard follow all the precautions and all those above 45 years to get vaccinated without any hesitation stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail Prime Minister Narendra Modi chaired a meeting on Saturday to review steps taken to boost oxygen availability in the country. In the meeting an important decision was taken to augment the production and availability of medical oxygen in the country amid its rising demand. The center has decided to grant full exemption from basic customs duty and health cess on the import of medical oxygen and other medical equipments related to the medical use of oxygen including oxygen concentrator, canister filling systems storage tanks pressure swing adsorption and vacuum pressure swing adsorption plants cryogenic oxygen air separation units cryogenic road transport tanks for oxygen ventilators and any other device from which oxygen can be generated the government also decided to exempt covid vaccines from basic import duty for the next 3 months In the meeting Mr Modi emphasized the need to immediately augment the supply of medical grade oxygen as well as equipment required for patient care both at home and in hospitals the prime minister stressed that all ministries and departments need to work in synergy to increase availability of oxygen and medical supplies he was briefed that basic customs duty was exempted on remdesivir and its active pharmaceutical ingredients recently Mr Modi also suggested that the import of equipment related to providing oxygen to patients needs to be expedited. The Prime Minister directed the Revenue Department to ensure seamless and quick custom clearance of all such equipment. The Department of Revenue has nominated Gaurav Masaldan, Joint Secretary in the Customs Department as a nodal officer for issues related to customs clearance for the above mentioned items. The center has taken a lot of measures in the last few days to improve supply of oxygen and medical supplies. The in, the Indian Air Force planes are bringing in cryogenic oxygen tanks from Singapore. It is also transporting oxygen tanks in the country to reduce travel times. Finance Minister, Commerce and Industry Minister, Health Minister, Principal Secretary to the Prime Minister, Member Niti Aayog, AIMS Director Dr. Randeep Guleria, and secretaries of the Department of Revenue, Health and DPIIT including other officials also participated in the meeting. Meanwhile, the Indian Railways is running Oxygen Express in response to its fight against COVID-19. Oxygen Express is with liquid medical oxygen LMO tankers arrived at Nashik and at Lucknow for Maharashtra and Uttar Pradesh respectively earlier in the day. Drug Controller General of India DCGI gave a restricted emergency use approval to the Zydus Cadillac Virafin for treating the patient showing moderate COVID-19 symptoms. Virafin when injected to the patient in the early stages of infection resulted in a faster recovery. Phase 2 human clinical trial studies confirmed the safety, tolerability and efficacy of Virafin. Phase 3 clinical trial studies reported that a larger portion of patients when administered subcutaneously with virifin turned out to 
be RT-PCR negative by day 7, apart from faster recovery as compared to other antiviral agents. The union government has advised states and union territories to register additional private COVID vaccination centers in mission mode for the third phase of vaccination, which will commence from the 1st of May. It has asked them to engage with private hospitals, hospitals of industrial establishment and industry associations. The states were also advised to coordinate with designated appropriate authorities for applications and their processing and monitoring of pendency of registration. Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan and Dr. Aris Sharma, Chairman Empowered Group on Technology and Data Management, to combat COVID-19 on Saturday chaired a high-level meeting to guide the states and UTs on effective implementation of the third phase of vaccination. The states have been asked to monitor the number of hospitals that have procured vaccines and have declared stocks and prices on COVID. They've been asked to publicize the facility of only online registration for age groups 18 to 45. During the meeting, states were advised to coordinate with law and order authorities for effective crowd management at COVID vaccination centers. Dr. Sharma noted that the COVID platform has now stabilized and is working at scale flawlessly. It is equipped to handle the complexities of the new phase of vaccination starting from the 1st of May. He highlighted the importance of uploading correct and timely data by states and UTs. He said any incorrect data would compromise the integrity of the entire system. The Secretary also reviewed their augmentation plans to strengthen the existing hospital and clinical treatment infrastructure for COVID patients. During the meeting, states were advised to review their existing hospital and other COVID treatment infrastructure in light of daily new case and daily fatality. Meanwhile, India has administered more than 14 crore doses of vaccines to its citizens. The nation had commenced the largest vaccination drive in the world on 16th of January this year with vaccination of healthcare workers. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshvardhan has said the country is gearing up for phase three of the world's largest vaccine drive starting on 1st May. He said the centre has shared guidelines with states and union territories for accelerating COVID-19 vaccination coverage. The health ministry informed that 3,46,000 new COVID-19 cases were reported in the country in last 24 hours. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, do gaz ki duri to maintain social distancing, maintain hand and face hygiene. Welcome back to the World News. In a first big effort to address the political crisis in Myanmar, leaders and foreign ministers of ASEAN countries met in Indonesia, capital Jakarta. They urged the head of the Myanmar Army, General Min Ong Hlaing, to end the violent crackdown in the country and release political prisoners immediately. President of the host country, Joko Widodo, called the situation unacceptable. He urged General Ming Ong Halang to allow the aid into Myanmar and release political prisoners. Vidoyo also asked to allow a special envoy into the country to push for a dialogue. Prime Minister of Malaysia, Mohidin Yassin, called for an immediate end to the violence against civilians and the unconditional release of political prisoners. Myanmar is a member of the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN. Meanwhile, protesters gathered in Jakarta near the venue of the summit, beating pots and pans and holding signs that read Restore Democracy and We Stand Against the Military Coup. Protests were also held in Myanmar's main cities, but there were no immediate reports of violence. The military captured power in a coup in February and ousted civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi. Reportedly, 700 people have been killed since then in a military crackdown on the protesters. The hope of rescuing 53 sailors on board Indonesian submarine KRI Nangala, which went missing Wednesday off the coast of Bali, has faded as it has been declared as lost by the Navy. The Navy chief, Yudo Margono, said on Saturday that his scan detected the submarine at the depth of 850 meters, which is far below the survivable limit. The submarine is designed to withstand a depth of up to 500 meters. He said parts of the submarine along with debris were located near the area where it went missing. Margono said the cracks happened gradually in some parts 
when it went down from 300 meters to 400 and then to 500 meters. He added if there was an explosion, it would be heard by the sonar. The military said it was preparing to evacuate the vessel. The submarine KRI Nangala, with 53 people on board, including the head of the Indonesian submarine fleet, disappeared after requesting permission to dive during a torpedo drill on Wednesday. Various countries, including India and the U.S., were involved in locating the Navy boat. The Eastern Indian state of West Bengal is heading into phase 7 of the elections of its Legislative Assembly. Several states in India recently went into elections amidst a growing concern over the coronavirus cases on the rise. In today's hotspot section, we are taking a closer look at what goes into the preparedness for elections under the COVID pandemic. In conversation are Akshay Raut, former Director General of the Election Commission, and Nilab Srivastav, journalist, over the COVID safety protocols during Assembly elections. Elections for the last two phases out of the total eight for the 294 member assembly of West Bengal are scheduled to be held on April 26 and 29 respectively. The recent massive surge in the coronavirus infection cases across the country, including West Bengal, is a cause of major concern. Now, there have been demands from various quarters, including various political parties, to curtail the campaigning, clubbing the remaining phases and also ensuring strict COVID-19 protocol so that the voters, the polling staff, everyone can be saved from contracting the infection. The poll panel in Delhi has already placed a ban on the roadshows and food marches, and it has also placed a cap on the number of persons attending the public meetings to 500. The Calcutta High Court very recently also expressed its dissatisfaction with the poll machinery over the enforcement of the health safety protocols with regard to COVID-19 during the polls process. And to bring the numbers into context, West Bengal data updated till Friday saw a highest single day spike of over 12,000 cases while 59 fresh deaths were registered. Now, today, the election commission, led by the chief election commissioner, Mr. Sushil Chandra, the election commissioner, Mr. Rajiv Kumar, held a meeting with senior officials of West Bengal, including the chief secretary, the ACS home, DGP, and various other senior functionaries related to the Paul's process. And it said that the enforcement under the DM Act, or the Disaster Management Act, during the public campaigns for election in the state, have been less than adequate. Mr. Raut, what best measures can be taken to safeguard the voters, the polling staff and people at large during the polls process that are being undertaken during the pandemic time? We are talking about two things at the same time. One part of the solution to this peculiar problem that we are facing in this country, particularly in the context of election, is enforcement. When we talk about enforcement, it is the election management that is handled by Election Commission of India, percolating down to its uh, field-level representatives, district election officers, election observers, even booth-level officers, nodal officers, and a whole paraphernalia that we know. An election commission from time to time, from the time date of its constitution in 1950, it has held periodic elections every time, on time, and it has been an incredible journey, and it has earned global respect for that. And every election is held in very different situations, sometime in the face of natural disasters like earthquake, floods, sometime in the midst of fears of certain social violence, sometime in the midst of deprivation, poverty and hunger. We have seen elections being conducted in the middle of high left-wing extremism action. And now we have in 2020 and 2021 a unique and unprecedented global health crisis, which has become a larger crisis for India with the resurgence. And Election Commission of India has to navigate through all this. And it is not easy. It is very easy to say such and such things have not been done. It's easy to have the hind hindsight, the benefit of the hindsight, and say that these could have been done, those could have been done. But it's not easy to, in a tight time frame, we are talking about 26 February when the general election to five state assemblies were announced. And we are talking about May 2nd on which date the counting will be held. And in this frame, with all the polling phases, of course, West Bengal, we have, as you just mentioned, we have eight phases for the very valid reasons which Election Commission has put forth. To handle any problem that comes up, including this resurgent pandemic, which was not as much indicated in February 26 when the elections were announced, any announcement planning is always contextual. And now we have a very scary scene across the country and in West Bengal for the purpose of election management. And as you said, two phases are still left. 
and we had the last two phases which also faced the brunt of this uh, pandemic in bad action. So I have been observing as an old election commission timer. I have seen during the last few weeks the commission trying to every day to innovate to respond to the fast developing situation. Just I'll give one example here. See, on the medical side and on the response to the health and life side, we are now looking for what? Seats in hospital, testing facilities, reporting after the test. We are also looking at a nightmare scarcity and over demand for oxygen. So these are situations which the health machinery, the hospital and the government at large is trying to answer. Let us look at the election management scenario. They have situations like big rallies, which could be super spreaders or which could lead to some more infections. They have to protect the election process. They have to protect the voters. They have to protect the health and life of the polling personnel who in the Indian context are massive in number. And they have to protect the will of people as represented in the holding of elections and which are also determined by various provisions of constitution and law and statute. An election commission has the sacred duty to conduct elections in accordance with those rules and regulations. It can't do whimsically. I mean, today we have a situation in which certain political parties are saying that, okay, merge the phases because we have a problem in hand. In certain respect, that perhaps has a justification because, you know, we are having a pandemic situation and the sooner the election process is over, perhaps the less will be threat to health and life. But it's a very complex process and all the dates, dates of notification, date of polling, the campaign period, the hours before the poll and then after that the counting, all are fixed according to certain rules and regulations. Suddenly, as a response, I mean, it is like uh, make something a little better. You can't have a destruction on the other side. It is a very tightrope walk for the Election Commission of India. And I am seeing how you just mentioned two or three responses, like some days back. This is not very usual. Election Commission has increased the silent hours of 48 to 72 hours. It's not usual. And it is not usual to take away the whole timing of campaign in the evening and the night and to limit it only to the daytime. It is not very usual to cut down a significant aspect, ways of like uh, certain types of rallies and roadshows. It's not easy. And to give credit to political stakeholders, I wish this type of wisdom had come a little before for them because uh, the political parties and candidates are top leaders. They represent the will of the people and they command the lot of following. And they're not school kids. The responsibility which has been shown in recently in the past couple of weeks in terms of disengaging from intensification of rallies, disengagement from the crowd in a physical sense so that life and health of those people are protected, this could have come a little before because they are responsible entities, they are political leaders, they hold positions, they also are supposed to represent people's interests. So if it had come a little before, it would have been very nice. Political parties right. and candidates have also displayed, just time finishing, certain level of responsibility, which goes well. Mr. Rao, these are unprecedented times, no doubt, as what you mentioned. The Election Commission also, for the first time, you have seen the Election Commission inside out. Invoking of the DM Act, the Disaster Management Act, the Election Commission did so. In its communications in the last two, three phases, it has said that the COVID-appropriate behavior has to happen. And it has also asked that appropriate and effective communication strategies need to be put in place to inform the voters about safe polling. So how do you see this uh, particular transition from a normal polling? Your concerns are more about uh, EVM functioning properly and security management and other things to coming to a stage where the Disaster Management Act has to be invoked so that anyone who's not following the protocols properly is penalized and taken to task with a very strict hand of action. Very correctly said, Nilav. And uh, the Disaster Management Act, in this case, the State Disaster Management Act in West Bengal, they largely hold the sway and hold the key in terms of management of people and uh, management of the way things are conducted. And let's just remember for a moment that Election Commission's force or the staff or the personnel during the elections are not its own. The Under the constitutional arrangement, the state, whether it is center or the state government, is supposed to provide all the resources to the election commission to manage the elections, right? These days they have started including from the Bihar election, which are the first election and the largest election in times of COVID anywhere in the world. 
and it was seen as a tremendous success. And in fact, the basic literature, the basic, uh, call it SOP, for conducting election during COVID times in India, anywhere in the world, has been derived from these elections in Bihar. So we have uh, the central paramilitary forces, police forces. We have all types of officers who belong to All India Central Services. We also have now health authorities and health officers all join up and they come under the disposal of the Election Commission of India to make it a successful, smooth, free, fair, transparent and participative election. That's how the things have happened. Now, in this situation, the Disaster Management Act gives a lot of width and all capacity to the state government of West Bengal in this case to enforce what we all are concerned about the COVID protocols like physical distancing, like uh, masking, like washing and hand and sanitizer, and following all protocols in all situations. But perhaps it has not been because of several reasons, the enforcement has not been to the satisfaction of one and all. We just got some numbers today. For example, uh, the face masks which have been provided are about 2.5 crores. And perhaps under this uh, arrangement, perhaps the hand gloves are to the extent of nine crores. I mean, everything, PPE, hand sanitizers and visors for face, plastic bags, covered dustbins. We cannot perhaps imagine that for, it's not for uh, no reason that the election management, elections in India are called the largest event management exercise in the world. All these are required in the COVID times. So the, the state under the Disaster Management Act is going to be to enforce this should enforce it effectively in all 294 constituencies and with the nodal health officers being in position and their enforcement people in position, all material and equipment provided. So this is what is expected. You just mentioned the interaction that happened today between the election commission and the state authorities. Everyone's position was given and the importance of doing it even better was re-emphasized by the Election Commission of India. So yeah. Rao, as someone who's been at the Election Commission where the mandate and the target obviously is that more and more participative election, you just said that. What would you suggest to our listeners, especially in the state of West Bengal who are listening to this broadcast, that what should they undertake as voters and as polling staff, how to go about ensuring that the voting happens with the safe environment and following all the COVID protocols so that everyone who's listening to us can understand the facts more better now that you've worked in the election commission earlier. I think fortunately, the elections that we are talking about, these five state assemblies, including West Bengal, have been highly participative election. We have a very politically alert electorate. It should be universal participation. Everyone whose name is on the electoral roll should come and vote. That's first. But we have the additional responsibility to make sure that all the people should come and vote with a mind that is free from inducement. And besides COVID, a lot of other things have happened, Nila, in this election, which should have been avoided. Some amount of physical and mental violence, some amount of mutual acrimony, which has really vitiated the election field in West Bengal. So the voter, when he comes, he or she should come, B, come without any type of fear, any type of pressure, or any type of induced mind in a free and fair mind, exercise his franchise for the sake of himself, for his constituency, for the state and for the country. Third, he or she should be extremely alert to save and protect his or her own life and health and that of others as well in this COVID pandemic time. So what exactly happens and now that we've seen an unprecedented time where the election commission has ensured or tried to put in guidelines, uh, the, the measures also for the overall health and the security of uh, the polling process, and it goes to the May 2nd also. So I think these protocols have to be followed till the strong room security and till May 2nd. That would be the correct position to say. Now we are uh, in a situation where around the country, these protocols are the only, the only two things which are available to face this pandemic. One is the vaccine, the second is COVID protocols. So I think in a way, these are extended into the state of West Bengal in the context of election. We are talking about because vaccine is as per their own periodicity, as per the own regulation. But COVID protocol is something to be availed of and to be observed at all times. Because election is typically an outdoor activity. So when people are generally advised to stay at home, but election vote cast has to be outside. So people have to be doubly careful when they travel from their homes to the polling station and interact with various uh, polling processes. And in the, they don't 
really get into any trouble for themselves and for others. Right. We hope that the elections remaining last two phases are followed with all the COVID appropriate behavior so that uh, everyone is safe and secure, the voters and also the polling staff. Thank you very much for joining Mr. Raoul. Thank you very much. The U.S. has joined the India-Sweden Climate Initiative, the leadership group for industry transition, lead IT. In a tweet, Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomed U.S. President Joe Biden for joining lead IT. The Prime Minister said it will help us meet Paris Agreement goals, strengthen competitiveness, and create new sustainable jobs. The lead IT or leadership group for industry transition was launched jointly by the Prime Minister of India and Sweden during the UNSG Climate Action Summit in September 2019. Lead IT currently has 29 member states and industries that work towards accelerating transition of all industry sectors to low carbon pathways in line with the goals of the Paris Agreement while pursuing efforts to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Indian Army has rescued 384 people from the avalanche site near Sumna in Uttarakhand. Ten bodies have been recovered so far. The Army said the rescue efforts are underway, unabated for the missing persons. In IPL cricket, chasing a target of 134 runs, Rajasthan Royals were 104 in four overs against Kolkata Knight Riders at Vankari Stadium in Mumbai when the reports last came in. Earlier, Rajasthan Royals won the toss and invited Kolkata Knight Riders to bat. First, Kolkata Knight Riders have posted 133 runs for the loss of nine wickets in the 20 overs with the help of Rahul Tripathi's 36 of 26 balls and Dinesh Karthik 25 of 27. For Rajasthan Royals, Chris Morris took four while Jaydev Unadkat, Chetan Sakaria and Mustafizur Mustafiz Rahman one wicket each. The Sri Lankan police on Saturday arrested a Muslim leader and member of parliament in connection with the 2019 Easter bombings in which nearly 270 people were killed. The lawmaker Rishad Batiuddin and his brother Riaz Batiuddin were arrested in Colombo. Now, let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Washington Post reports that the astronauts aboard SpaceX Endeavour capsule enter the International Space Station. New York Times writes that Nick Springer, who became a Paralympic gold medalist in wheelchair rugby at Beijing in 2008, dies aged 35 on Saturday. The Guardian reports Gaza militants fire rockets after clashes flare in Jerusalem. And the Globe and Mail writes that Ottawa's new childcare funding plan bound to come up against provincial pushback. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi chairs meeting to review steps taken to boost oxygen availability in the country. Over 14 crore vaccine doses administered in India, 3,46,000 new COVID-19 cases reported in the last 24 hours. ASEAN leaders meet in Indonesia in a bid to resolve the Myanmar crisis, call an end to violence against citizens. Indonesian Navy declares missing submarine with 53 persons on board as sunk. India prepares for third phase of vaccination commencing from 1st of May. US joins India-Sweden Climate Initiative lead IT. And in IPL cricket, Rajasthan Royals take on Kolkata Knight Riders in Mumbai. India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artist from Sri Lanka. And with that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.